This is a surgical tray. And you're probably thinking to yourself, looking at this, wow, that's a lot of instruments. Can be much more than this, depending on the doctor and exactly what we're doing. So this is kind of a surgical setup, but may not be for every surgical setup. So again, we're going to start with our syringe, our needles, our carpal of anesthetic, and our topical. Get our patient numb, and now we need to go in there, right? We have our basic setup again, which is our mirror, explorer, and cotton pliers. We have our most important instrument, our periosteal elevator, which again is to remove the gum tissue away from the tooth and to break the periodontal ligament. We have our three elevators, small, medium, and large. And again, you can see the tips are much different in sizes from each other. We have a forcep. This forcep, again, is the cow horn forcep. Now, like I said, you may use a different type of forcep. Kind of depends on your doctor. But for this purpose, we're going to use the cow horns. And we put the rancher on. The reason that we use the rancher again is because in case we have to remove any tissue. We have our Minnesota that we had on our basic tray for retraction. Our surgical suction tip and our gauze. Now the things that vary from this surgical tray is our surgical curette. This curette kind of looks like the spoon that we have in some of our other setups, but a lot bigger. This actually goes down into the socket and removes any dead tissue that is down there. Also, we can use the surgical curette to actually stimulate blood flow. We have, sometimes, we have where the tooth has broken off. And these are root tip picks. And you can see by the shape of them that one is in one direction and one is the other. So you can see right here on the tip. Same thing on this side. They are left and right, and they are left and right of the tooth. So it would be like it could be the lingual or it could be the buccal facial. These instruments are exactly the same as the root tip picks would be. They go left or right, and they are opposite directions. These can be called flags. They are criers. Um, people have a lot of different names for these. And I always think of these as criers because they look like they would make you cry. We also have surgical scissors and we have a surgical hemostat. We also have our tissue forceps. And you can tell with the tissue forceps how blunt it is on the end. Where our cotton forceps are actually much pointier and sharp. So that's why these are tissue forceps so they can actually take the tissue out. We have our Monoject syringe, again, which saline or chlorhexidine. But we also have a scalpel. This scalpel happens to be disposable. These scalpels in this um, autoclave bag, these are just the handles for the scalpels. So needles, the scalpel itself, the cutting part, actually goes on here. I don't really like these because I think they're dangerous. Um, but a lot of oral surgeons' offices, if they use these, because they would go through a lot of disposable, um, when they use these, they actually have scalpel removers. So that's kind of a handy little thing. And then we have our sutures. Now these sutures happen to be non-reservable, um, but we do have reservable ones too. And they usually come in a gold package. So on the end of this is the needle, which you would hold with the hemostat, and that would go through the tissue in order to suture it up. And then we have our two by two, which we fold into a little square and the patient bites on it. So this is a good selection of surgical instruments for a surgical tray, being it surgical and not basic extraction.